First of all, I want to say it's an honor to be here, and good afternoon. Um, people ask me all the time, why did I start a youth boxing program? There's no money in youth boxing. So the answer to that is, I started it because of two reasons. One, I know how to do boxing. That's what I know how to do, box. Two, is that I want to help the young men in the community avoid some of the troubles that I went through as a young man. I can remember when I was a kid, teachers and people in the neighborhood telling me that uh, by the time you're 21, you'll be dead or in jail. Can you imagine that as your outlook? So what I did was, I, I did some soul searching, I did some thinking, and I had to make some changes. So I was, I'm 43 years old now. When I reached 21, I thought to myself, yes. But then reality set in. I could still be have my life taken away from me at any point in time. It didn't have to be 21. So I said, wow, I got I to gotta, you know, buckle down. So I went out and got a job. I, start, I tried to go back to school. I felt I was a little bit too old for school. So I did what some of the kids do now, which is homeschooling. I read everything I thought I could find, anything I could read, I read it. And I came across uh, Macbeth. And I read a line in Macbeth that went, out, out, brief candle. Life is but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets is hour upon stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. And that stayed with me for a long time. I thought about it. I'm like, wow, I dedicated a lot of my time to nothing. So with that being said, I wanted to go out and tell all my friends, like, hey, you know, let's do this. Let's change our lives. But it wasn't that easy. It wasn't the time. So I decided to work more on myself. And I was given an opportunity later on that I almost thought I made success. I started making some good money out here, working construction. And so I did what I thought was the best thing to do. I, I quit that job and decided to dedicate it to the Downtown Boxing Youth Program. At the Downtown Boxing Youth Program, I said, we're going to take a different approach. We're not going to just concentrate on trying to create champions. Because the reality of it is, nine times out of ten, the guys are not going to be a champion. It takes a lot more than just talent to become a champion. You have to have everything in place. And if any one thing is not in place, you, you're not going to make it as a champion in, in boxing. It's not that money. It's not going to be there for you. It's not going to be that many Mayweathers or Pacquiao's. Those are one in a million. So we concentrate on the education portion of it. The neighborhood where the gym is located, they, kids are graduating in that neighborhood, and it's just around the corner from this building that we're sitting in today. They're graduating at 37% from high school. That's not a lot of kids. But the kids in the gym, if we found that if we gave them a positive, uh, supportive environment, they would tend to thrive. Because we see it in the boxing ring all the time. What, what the kids learn in the boxing ring, it don't, doesn't always come from the coach. It comes from watching the guys around them. So when they, they watch the guys around them and they see the guys in the, in the back room with the tutors, they tend to see their grades go up. And I see them, their, their, their uh, confidence level grow. So they grow by being around their peers. So it is true about positive peer pressure too. It works. We, along the way, we also came up with a few champions. I'm gonna show them to you here in a second. Right. Right here, along the way, we did come across a few champions. We have uh, Anthony Flagg. He's ranked number two in the nation right now. Graduated, first one in his, in his, in his house to go to college. Him and his twin sister, Antonique. Um, we have Janelson Figueroa, first person in his family to go to college. I mean, well, he didn't go to college yet, I'm sorry. The first person to uh, graduate high school in his, in his family. Um, we have Cortez Ty, who attends Martin Luther King High School right now, he's number one in the, in the country. He just won the world title. I'm sorry, he won, he, won the wor he won the world title ringside, and he just recently won. He just got third place in the country, nationally, ranked. We got a, we got a list of them. We can go past that, though. But my point today is with positive reinforcement, the kids do have a chance. There is some hope, despite all odds. When I look at the neighborhood, I look at the kids and I see them, they're walking through the neighborhood, but it's almost like a gauntlet of negativity. And our gym has become 
what you would call a, a refuge. And I, and I look at it as a, as a launching platform because I've seen young men in a household where they become closer with their fathers just by being at the gym. They become more closer with their mothers because their mother comes to all the events. So I believe we're doing more than making fighters. We're making uh, good people. That's always been our goal to help people become productive members of society. I've seen, I've seen a lot of uh, positive things, but the one thing that I'm proud of the most is to see the kids push each other. When one kid is slacking off, the other kid, kid will take up the slack. To see, like uh, sometimes I, I get caught up in, in it, you know, it's, it's an emotional thing for me. I see some of the kids' uh, parents where parents may not know something. And we'll see other parents help this family member out where he can't take his kid to an event where another parent will step in and pull the slack. And as a community, we might have to do that with some of these young men and women. Um, my time is short here today. Um, the, the overall goal of this program, like I said, is to create a positive environment, safe environment for the kids in the community who otherwise may not have it. The, um, where's Jessica? <laughs> She's the person who wrote the thing for me today about this portion of it. I, I don't know the exact numbers, but we have, um, we have almost 100% graduation rate at our, at our kids. The kids who come through our program, they tend to graduate on time. Everybody who's eligible to graduate have graduated on time. They have graduated on time. And my, myself, personally, I didn't, I didn't go to high school. I didn't get the chance to see homecoming. I didn't get a chance to see that, but I'm here today to tell you that I've seen homecoming quite a few times. I've seen graduations quite a few times. You know, I, it feels like every time I see one of the kids on stage, they're like, Coach, are you coming? You couldn't keep me away. I have to come there. I have to be there. I have to see it. You know, I feel like I graduated a bunch of times myself now. And that's been my time, y'all. I got to go. Okay.